Um, so the question is, what is your favorite winter sport? So like snowboarding, ice skating, sledding, whatever. Um, so anybody, what's your favorite sport? Mine's watching bobsledding. I know I don't participate in it, but for me, that's always really fun to watch. For me, it's ice skating. Fun. What about you, Aiden? I don't really have a favorite winter sport. I don't know much about winter sport. Yeah. What about you, Skylar? Mine would definitely be ice skating. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. What about you, David? Probably skiing. Kaylee, what about you? Um, mine is probably ice skating. Me too. Mira, what about you? I like sledding. Evie, what about you? What's your favorite? Ice skating. We have a lot of ice skaters. Did I miss anyone? Did everyone get to go? Hey, Mira, did you go? Yeah. All right, thanks everybody. Um, so we've got some new faces on the call today. Uh, would y'all care to just share your name and your grade in case uh, not everybody knows each other? I'll go first. Hi, I'm Grace and I'm a junior in high school. Hi, I'm McKenna. I am a freshman. Hi, I'm Mira and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Aiden and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Hi, Sky I'm close. I'm oh, sorry. It's okay. I'm Skylar and I'm in fourth grade. And I'm Chloe, and I'm in 10th grade. Um, I'm Kaylee, and I'm a freshman. I'm David, and I'm in 6th grade. I'm Kaylee, and I'm in 7th grade. I'm Evie, and I'm a freshman. All right, thanks everybody. Sorry for my delay. I was helping Brooklyn get on. Um, 
So Emma couldn't be with us today. She is in another training, but I wanted to check and see if um, Grace or Kenna or anybody else had anything they wanted to share from SAD or other stuff. Um, I'll go. Uh, we had, I think, 15 entries for our group for the PSA challenge, which is super exciting. Um, they, um, it's closed now. So thank you everyone who put entries in. Um, so yeah, that, um, hopefully the judging will be come out soon. And Miss Jillian, I'm sorry I didn't reply to your email, but I, Emma texted me earlier on Monday and told me about, um, the thing. So I changed the listing on my video and yeah, that's all from this he said. Yay, so thank you, thank you if you submitted a PSA. That is so exciting. Um, I think we, I'm not positive, but I think we had probably the most entries in Tennessee. Um, and if you did submit an entry, um, you'll be getting a t-shirt in the mail from Gavin. Um, so if you submitted and didn't tell me that you submitted, make sure that I know so that I can tell him to send you a t-shirt. Um, so if, if you sent it to me or if you told me that you submitted, I went ahead and gave him your info. Um, but if you haven't told me, let me know so I can make sure and get you a t-shirt for submitting. So go team, good job. Um, so I wanted to just talk really quickly about this semester. I know this is a new time for us, um, which is gonna be something that we all have to get used to um, instead of our, our normal 12 o'clock meeting. Um, and so just as a reminder, what we're going to do this semester is um, we'll have our meeting with everybody just like this at the, the beginning of the month on the first Tuesday at three. Um, and then we'll have, we'll still have weekly meetings, but you get to choose which ones you want to participate in. So there are lots of different things going on, creative writing and video editing and um, talking about mental health and um, talking about nonprofits and just lots and lots of things. Um, and so you get to choose. I would of course love it if you join us every week, um, but if that's too much or if there are things that you wanna focus on, you're welcome to just join what works for you. Um, so if I had your email address, I sent you the schedule. Um, and then I also sent the schedule to all of the parents. Um, and so your parents should have that as well. It's also in our Facebook group. Um, if you are in our Facebook group and if you haven't signed up for our Remind app, um, please let me know that too so that you can get texts um, directly to your phone or emails directly to your email so you know exactly what we have going on. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I'm also excited that you guys won't have to listen to just me anymore. Um, we have Miss Melanie from Sullivan County and Miss Christy from Unicoi County, Miss Denise from Johnson County, who are all gonna bring new and exciting things for you all um, throughout this semester through different classes and, and lots of different things. So really super excited about that. And also knowing that you guys don't all live necessarily in Carter County and that's where I am. I'm excited for the opportunities, um, you know, for Grace not to have to drive an hour to get to us, maybe to have some things in Sullivan County that are a little bit closer for her or, um, or Johnson City or whatever. So I'm super excited about all of that. Um, so what we're gonna do today, so I know we just finished up um, the PSAs on distracted driving and roundabouts and all of that. And so we're gonna, gonna watch a little video today um, about distracted driving and about the impact that it had on one family. Um, so you all will be, some of y'all got them last week in my office. Um, if you were there, if you weren't there, you'll be getting a little workbook in the mail that'll go along with this. So um, you can be watching out for that soon. Um, but we're gonna watch this little video. There's Emma, she joined us. So we're going to watch this little video about that today. Do you have anything you want to add, Em? We talked about PSA contest already. Yes, I just want to say thank you guys so much for entering your PSA ideas. We were actually able to go over our goal, which was 15 PSA ideas. Thank you, everyone. And uh, good luck. I hope that you guys all place, even though there are only 10 spots. And since we got over 
more than 15, that means not everyone will place, but good luck in that. Yay! Now give me one second to get this pulled up. I'm trying to share on my phone and I'm used to my computer, so it takes me just a second, that's why. Okay. Okay, so will y'all tell me if you can hear this if I meet? Can you all hear the video? Well, we can't, but if you want, I can look it up and I can present it or share it. Yes. And will you? Hold on. Okay, Emma, I'm gonna send it to you. Will you share it from your computer? Okay, I'm gonna just text it to you. Hello? I, I can't hear anything. Oh, she's on mute. I don't know what to do. <laughs> All right, can everybody see in the screen? All right, everyone see my screen? Okay. Can everyone hear it? I hope you have seen this screen. I hope you've seen this on the interstate in the sea. Several years ago, we asked PDOT, Tennessee Department of Transportation, to run this. Please don't. Drop. Oh, sorry. Drowsy message. And now, several times a year, it's running on all the interstates across Tennessee. So, hundreds of thousands of people are getting this message. So why am I here today talking to you and who cares about drowsy driving? I'll tell you why. Yeah. I'm just going to it part, Unfortunately, the answer to that is not enough people. Not enough people care about sleep and drowsy driving. I know who she is, though. contacted me for a workbook. This is for pollution and beta. Okay. But I don't... And you'll have something to share with friends and family when you have finished, and also you can refer back to it. In our country, sleep is not a priority, unfortunately. And the reason that I care is because of my nephew, Kyle Canal, who was a junior at Houston High School in Germantown, Tennessee. It was a May evening, school was about to be out for the summer. He had a friend spending the night, and he asked my sister if they could make a walk around the block. Well, he was 17, so she didn't see anything wrong with that, but she never saw him alive again. Kyle was killed by a this young driver came up on the sidewalk where Kyle was walking and killed him. Kyle was my parents' only grandson. My sister's only son, Katie and Kelsey's only brother. The boy's decision that night 
to drive when he knew he was too tired changed everything about my family. His decision left a giant hole in my family's heart. Kyle was super smart, although he hit it very well. He was um, a guitar player in a band. He was restoring a 1974 Firebird. He was just what you would call an all around kid. And he was very kind. He was also a varsity wrestler. These words, I'm so tired, I can't wait to get home. If your only thought since lunch has been, I'm so tired, I can't wait to get home. And the keys are in your pocket and your car is in the parking lot. Is it really a good idea to get in the driver's seat and drive home? The boy that killed my nephew was five minutes from home. Five minutes, what could happen in five minutes? Well, everything, everything changed about our family because of that decision to drive. You do have other options. Just because the key is in your pocket does not mean you need to go out there and get in the driver's seat. You can get on the bus. You can ask a friend. You can call your parents and say you're too tired to drive. You don't want to risk it. I'm sure they'll have some ideas to help you or they can come get you. Don't drive just because the key is in your pocket. So what is drowsy driving? Drowsy driving is operation of a motor vehicle while being impaired by a lack of sleep. And what causes it? Well, of course, not enough sleep. You can do something about that. Another cause is shift work. Shift work is when you are working odd hours, like you work all night and sleep during the day. This goes against your body's circadian rhythm, and it's very difficult to do, and it's very hard on your body. So why would anyone do that? Well, think about the people that do shift work, like doctors and nurses and fire and police, all our emergency personnel that we need so desperately. You just know if you go into this line of work that it's really hard, and the experts say that even on your days off, you're supposed to keep those same hours. So that does not, doesn't leave much time for your family or friends. Another cause of drowsy driving is medication. On every bottle of doctor prescribed medication, pretty much every bottle, it will have a warning label that says may cause drowsiness. So that means it may cause drowsiness. Or you may have some other reaction to it. It may make you wide awake, too alert, too hyper-focused on everything except your driving. So be careful when you're on medication. And sometimes you're not sick enough to go to the doctor, but all, all day you've been feeling kind of crummy and you keep telling yourself, my head hurts, my tummy hurts, I don't feel good. Don't drive. You're not going to do a good job driving. Your focus is on your health at that point, not on the road and getting to your destination safely. Stress. I bet some of you teens experience stress on a daily basis. So what would stress have to do with drowsy driving? Well, stress affects your driving or your sleep in two different ways. One, you can't go to sleep because you've got so many things on your mind, so many things that have to get done. Or two, you can't stay asleep. I don't know which is worse, but they're very, both very annoying, and they definitely affect your sleep. And the last thing is alcohol. I'm sure you've heard plenty about not drinking and driving. You're smarter than that. So drowsiness can cause a slower reaction time. Impaired judgment and vision. Decline in attention to important signs, like you're driving to Nashville and you end up in Chattanooga. I have heard stories like this. This actually happens. I heard a, a policeman tell this story one time that he ended up in Kentucky because he'd been working something like 30 hours straight. So um, a decline in attention to important signs is a very real thing. Decreased alertness and aggressive behavior. 
problems processing information. You see a deer in the road and this time of year in Tennessee, deer are everywhere. And you just keep heading that direction. It's instead of thinking of what am I gonna do to avoid this potentially terrible situation, you just keep heading towards the deer. You're just not processing. And micro sleeps. A micro sleep is a brief sleep episode where your eyes are open and you appear to be awake, but nothing is really happening upstairs. Who's most likely to be involved in a sleep related crash? You're the reason I'm here today. Young drivers, 16 to 25 year old, commit up to 70% of all drowsy driving crashes. Let's talk about male or female who commits more crashes. Males, they have this wonderful thing called testosterone and girls, you have that too, but teen boys have a lot of testosterone, which is great if they're trying to win the Super Bowl or the track meet or the basketball game. It's not so great if they haven't had enough sleep and they're behind the wheel and that little voice is saying, go ahead, you can do this, you've got this. It's only five minutes. You have to be very careful, young man, and not listen to that voice. Is drowsy driving your fault? In the booklet that says to circle yes or no, I think the answer is both. One, you have so much on your plate School. The school leads you to think that you have to be in 10 clubs, you have to be president of five, but then you have to do community service every spare hour. You have five hours, six, seven hours of homework every night. I'm a retired teacher. I don't really believe that. No, I think as long as you're doing your best, you're going to be fine. Did I miss the beta? But you're saying I'm fine, then you can tell me that you Please, I, I don't know anything. Seriously, most of you don't make sleep a priority in your life. It's not almost over. This video is 25 minutes. You know, you have four or five hours of homework. This is this is your data. Nine o'clock at night. Time management is more in line with what your needs are, and then you'll be able to get to bed at a healthy amount of time. So you've got all this stuff going on, sports and friends and jobs and church and grandma and family and school, homework, 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 and we expect you to find enough time to get a healthy night's sleep. So why do we sleep? It's not the last thing on the list. It's not what we do when we don't have anything else to do. Wonderful things happen when we sleep. They're sleep scientists, and all they do is study sleep. And they have found that for a team to get a healthy amount of sleep, it takes eight to 10 hours. So during this eight to 10 hours, body can refresh, rejuvenate, and device every day. You need to get plugged in to sleep every day. You need a healthy amount of sleep every day. While you're sleeping, your hormones regulating growth and appetite you get a chance to do their thing. You your brain flushes out all the junk you don't need to keep, and it takes the information that you do need to keep and it consolidates it. It makes oh, it amazing. Wait, she said I'm in the right place. You can use it for the test on Friday. You can use it in three years. You can use it in 25 years. You have made it a memory. And that happened because you slept on that information. If you have a big test tomorrow and you wait some time to start studying. And while you're studying, you decide, hey, I'm just going to stay up all night. Then it'll be fresh on my mind. I want you to know that's the worst thing possible. You have to sleep on that information. So for one thing, you should have started studying days before this. And you will sleep on that information each night. So by the time you get to the test, you will know the information. Have you ever taken a test and you're looking at the words and thinking, I know, but you have no idea what the answer is? You did not get enough sleep after you learned the information to make it a memory. How much sleep? Do you get 
think about what time you went to bed last night and count up until you woke up this morning. Do you think it was enough? You need eight to 10 hours of uninterrupted sleep. I wonder why uninterrupted is so large in that sentence, because that's the most important part of that. The eight to 10 is very important, of course, but uninterrupted means your cell phone isn't making noise all night long. You're not getting any notifications. So how do you do that? You set your phone to do not disturb or airplane mode. You still get your alarm, but all the other things that your friends want you to know during the night, you will know that when you wake up. And I make up for lost sleep. So you know you need eight to 10 hours of sleep every night. Let's say, let's use the number 10 to make it easy. So if you need eight to 10, let's say 10 hours, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that would be 50 hours at the end of those five nights. But you chose to get half that amount. You chose to get five. You think that your body can refresh, repair, rejuvenate, recharge in half the time that sleep sciences say it takes. So you got five hours. So instead of 50 hours, at the end of those five nights, you have had 25 hours of sleep. Wow, I wonder what would have happened if you'd gotten the whole 50 hours. But you decide you'll just sleep all day on Saturday. How does that work? Well, it doesn't work at all. For one thing, I've tried it when I was a teenager. Super grouchy, felt terrible. It did no good. But if you need to refresh, repair, recharge, rejuvenate on Monday, how could you possibly do it on Saturday if it didn't happen on Monday? You can't. So the 8 to 10 hours is in every 24-hour period. And when that is gone, when that window has closed, it's gone forever. You cannot make up for lost sleep. Losing as little as two hours of sleep in a single night is equal to driving after drinking three beers. I'm going to say that again. Losing as little as two hours of sleep in a single night is equal to driving after drinking three beer. You would never do that. But we don't think twice about it getting six to eight hours or less instead of eight to 10. How many drowsy driving crashes do you think there are every year? NHTSA is the expert, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, says there's 1.5 million drowsy driving crashes every year. Yes, I can see that it says over 500,000. That's because I made this a few years ago, and I left it like this to remind me that in just a few years, it has exploded from over 500,000 to 1.5 million. Remember when I said teens commit up to 70% of the, those crashes? That's a lot of crashes committed by teens. I do not want you to be one of them. So there's 1.5 million crashes every year. And here's another fact, 83 million fatigue drivers on the road every day, every day. So know that when you're driving, there's a good chance that most of the cars around you are being driven by a fatigue driver. One of my favorite athletes is Tom Brady. 43 years old and still at the top of his game, and the reason, one of the reasons why is he puts his health first and he especially puts his sleep first. I know for a fact that he's in, in bed every night during the season by eight o'clock so that he can get as much sleep as his body needs to repair and rejuvenate. He is so concerned about sleep that he has his own line of recovery wear, which are actually pajamas, $100 pajamas. And they have copper running through them. Copper is for repairing. So um, when you buy his $100 pajamas, you get this book. It's called Tom Brady and the Tortoise and the Hare. And the story goes that the tortoise and the hare challenged Tom Brady to a football game of all things. So the tortoise and the hare um, go out. They drink carrot juice. They uh, cause trouble. I think at one point in the book, they went to jail. Tom Brady goes home and goes through his keys to a good night's sleep. Who do you think 
get out from behind the wheel and wake up. You need to stop when you stop for a break. You need to walk around and take some deep breaths. In a car, you're just breathing the same old air, but you also need to get your blood flowing. And uh, by waking up, I, I am not saying to depend on an energy drink. Energy drinks have serious health consequences for teens, and we do not recommend them. So if you're feeling sleepy behind the wheel, the Kyle Cannell Foundation recommends that you pull over to a safe, well-lit location with the doors locked. Safe, well-lit, doors are locked. This is a rest stop in Tennessee. We have them everywhere in Tennessee. There's hundreds of them. It's a very safe place for you to pull over. Have a caffeinated beverage, which it can be one of these, strong coffee or super strong coffee and a 30 minute nap. Pull over to a safe, well-lit location, doors are locked, have a caffeinated beverage and a 30 minute nap. It takes 30 minutes for the caffeine to kick in. I'm not saying that when you wake up, you're good to go. I'm saying you're better prepared to make a good decision. Am I good to go? Should I call my parents? Should I get a hotel? You, you'll have some choices to make but your mind will be more alert for you to make those choices. I would love for you to take the pledge to not drive drowsy at don'tdrivedrowsy.org. There's also most of the information I just told you today on that site. And remember that a pledge is a promise, a promise to your friends and your family and yourself that you would never get behind the wheel if you have not had enough sleep. For more information, you can go to kylecannellfoundation.org, and um, we give a college scholarship every year to a graduating senior in Tennessee, and all that information is posted there. It is due every year in February. Your homework tonight is to talk to your parents. Mom, have you ever driven drowsy? Dad, what about you? If they're being honest, they'll probably tell you, yes, they have. I have. I was driving to Florida once with my only child in the car and my best friend and her only child in the car and they were all asleep and I was just bobbing and bobbing and thinking I'm too tired to be driving but I kept driving. We arrived safely but that scared me to death and I will never do it again. Of course I'll never do it after the tragedy that struck my family but I don't want this to happen to you. I want you to be a safe driver, I want you to be a confident driver, and I want you to be a happy and healthy person, and that can start with your sleep. You will be amazed at how happy and healthy you will feel if you start getting 18 hours of sleep every night. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Please think about your sleep and your driving. Thank you. So did anything about that video kind of surprise you? Uh, you can put it in the chat. Oh, could everyone hear everything? Okay, just making sure I just saw something from the chat. But anyway, uh, go ahead and put it in the chat if like something you didn't know before. We'll put that down. Did you know anything that she talked about? Did you not know anything that before she said something? No, because your mom's told it out and I'll know your whole life. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I was just talking and was muted the whole time. What did y'all think about that? You learn anything? I don't know why, but I never realized it took 30 minutes for coffee to kick in. I just thought I was just drinking more of it at a time. Interesting. <laughs> Kaylee says, I didn't know that sleep was that big of an issue for driving. Yes. 
the only time I ever really remember feeling like I shouldn't drive and having somebody pick me up was when I was in college and I worked at the hospital. And so I would work all night and then go to school during the day. And I remember just being so tired <laughs> and thinking like, I probably shouldn't drive right now and having somebody pick me up. Um, because I think sometimes we don't even realize how tired we are. And I know some of y'all aren't quite old enough to drive yet, but I think this is really important to, to be thinking about now because it won't be too long before you will be driving. So, any other thoughts on that? All right, so because you all were here today, I'm gonna mail you a little workbook and um, a tag for your keychain. Um, so be watching for those. If you don't have a keychain, let me know and I will send you one. Um, put that in the chat um, and I will send you one. If you don't know what that is, we earn little tags for our keychains um, when we do things. Um, and so the girls who did Martin Luther King story time for me, um, you'll be getting a tag for that. This is I have a dream. Um, lots of different things you can get tags for, but they're just fun to collect um, and see what all you can get. So it's good stuff. All right. Y'all have anything else before we go? Okay, so just a couple more little um, housekeeping kinds of things. Um, if you are doing beta competition, watch for a text for me in the next, um, I don't know, week or so. Um, we'll be getting together and finalizing plans for that. Um, and then anybody that's not in beta, but that would like to help with this project, also let me know um, because they are the marketing and communications um, project for junior betas this time is to create a kind of a marketing campaign for a nonprofit. And so they're actually going to be able to create a campaign um, for you all and what you do and um, about Youth Coalition so that hopefully you all can all, if you ever have a friend or anybody that would like to join us, um, you'll have a cool commercial kind of to, to share with them. So if you have input on that uh, before they make the final project, please let me know. Um, all right. Y'all have anything else? Okay, well, I'll see you next week or in a couple weeks or whenever you want to get back together with us. Hopefully, I'll see lots of y'all next week. Have a good day. Bye.